Mystical living is an art. Now, I'm sure we all have concepts of, of an artist, and if we are not talented in any of the visual arts, we think, oh, well, how could I be an artist? And Joel recognized this. Two of his most well-known books, The Art of Meditation and The Art of Spiritual Healing, indicate that to live a mystical life is living an artistic life. Well, the expression of an artist is not really what people respond to. They respond to the truth that an artist is. And for an artist to really know and express a degree of truth, they have to know themselves. If they think of themselves as human beings caught in a particular culture, if they are angry at what they see around them, if they suffer, then all that shows in their art because their level of truth only goes as deep as their concepts. Spiritually, when we find that self within us and let it express itself, the art of living becomes an expression of this spiritual activity. Spiritual activity of love, for that really is the only spiritual activity there is, is love. So where, as Joel had the analogy of the onion skins, and we keep peeling off the onion skins, because of my artistic sense, this, this new idea of deconstructing concepts is really the same thing. Unless we are aware of what presses our buttons, what makes us angry, what makes us happy, what satisfies us, on the material level, we are going to be hypnotized by those activities and manipulated by those concepts, concepts of good and concepts of evil. So the beginning steps in any artistic endeavor is really twofold. Number one, an artist must have something to say, something to express. If an individual just doesn't feel they have anything to express, then when they put a pen to paper or they want to sculpt, there's nothing there because there is no inner sense coming out. Spiritually, we have a greater canvas because the canvas is life itself. And what is the expression that we want to have but our own experience in living? And we've been told, we've been taught that if we turn our attention to spirit, if we accept God using biblical terms, if we allow this spiritual nature to be acknowledged within us, then our life is going to be an outpicturing an activity of this spiritual dimension. Now this, is, this spiritual truth really has nothing to do with the ego or our personality. So one of the beginning steps that we have, well, it's twofold really, because meditation is the step that we take to get in touch with our spiritual nature. The other step, though, is to examine ourselves the basis of this mystical living is knowing ourself and that own, the, the self that we know that frees us from all limitation is spiritual and that self we experience when we are out of the conceptual realm of conditioning, personality and ego. So let's close our eyes and let's look within ourselves, look past the obvious facades of gender and 
age, race. And as we look within us, individually, seeking that truth so that it can be expressed, we find that suddenly we go beyond all concept. We go beyond identifying with our body, identifying with our personality. And if we can take this really deep, we go into that profound silence where we discover the I that I am. We can form no concept of this state of being. For it is beyond words and thoughts. And we find that our identity, who we are, is not bound by our physical form. We are aware of this instrument we have, but we realize that it is an activity of our consciousness, the one universal spiritual consciousness. And we find that there is a unity in this presence, a oneness. That links all of the diverse individual expression it links it in this atmosphere of love in this state of peace we discover that there is no need to look outside of this consciousness for any good, for any health, for any fulfillment. For everything that is expressed spiritually emanates from this atmosphere. 